Tales from the Dragon Song War is a series of official short stories focused on the events and people of Heaven's World. This is the seventh story, a Malm in her shoes. Levier. Alice Ray took immense pride in her name. It served as a constant reminder to the world of her connection to her grandsire, the great Louis Va Levier, the man who spared the realm of Eorzea from the worst ravages of the seventh umbral calamity. Needless to say, such noble heritage came with certain expectations, and she had worked tirelessly at the studium to surpass them. Despite her many laudable academic achievements, however, Alice's tomboyish behavior and sharp tongue, honed through years spent bickering with her equally gifted twin brother, had earned her scorn of her peers. But Alice took solace in the thought that Louis Va had himself been possessed of a mischievous streak and had never been one to suffer fools gladly. Having completed her schooling, Alice had travelled to Eorzea in fever of expectation, eager to see the realm for which her grandsire had sacrificed so much. But what she found there was not at all what she had imagined, and so after much soul-searching, she had resolved to explore the land in search of a cause for which to fight, a purpose of her own. She would travel alone, accompanied by neither servant nor adventurer, and certainly not by her brother, adamant that the impression she formed be unsullied by the opinion of the other. And now after many days on the road, she found herself in the barren lands of Thanalan. Having toiled for malms in the relentless midday heat, she relented and sought refuge in a wayside tavern. Stubborn bitch! She squinted towards the source of the outburst. Her eyes don't yet adjusted to the dim interior, and made out a burly man towering over a young lady. The girl, a traveller judging by her attire, stood undaunted, even as the brute raised a meaty fist. Alice sighed it. She had grown weary of these barbaric people and their childish squabbles, but had not forgotten her grandfather's old admonishment. To ignore the blight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom. Is indolence. It is far too hot to fight, Alice announced loudly, but if you insist on hitting something, then I will be happy to arrange a meeting between you and the floor. Both quarrelers flinched at the sound of Alice's voice, turning to meet her cold gaze with almost identical expression of stunned surprise. And thus did Alice make the acquaintance of young Emery, the travelling merchant. According to Emery, her caravan was ordinarily accompanied by a guard, but after said Selsworth had unexpectedly refused the offer of a new contract, she had been left at the mercy of, of a customer who thought to intimidate her into accepting a less than favourable trade. Having witnessed how effortlessly Alice cowed the man, however, the merchant now seemed determined to convince her saviour to serve as the caravan's new escort. Like all roving peddlers, Emery explained her associate made the living trading goods between far-flung settlements. But she claimed the trader of her particular caravan knew all of the shortest routes and were famed for the swiftness which they brought new wares to the market. In short, one could wish for no finer employers. Despite the nakedness of Emery's patter, Alice found that she was enthralled. Every aspect of the merchant nomadic lifestyle seemed unspeakably fascinating. Though she took pains to hide her enthusiasm, lest she seem ignorant of the world, the grin of the merchant face suggested that Alice's attempt to feign his interest was less than successful. And so after pausing as if to weigh the decision, she agreed. In the days that followed, Alice studied the merchant ways, swiftly growing accustomed to their routine, such as when the caravan eventually pulled in to his next port of call, a village nestled at the base of the Sea of Spires. She felt like a changed woman. With new eyes, he appraised their destination. The settlement's central bazaar was meagre compared to the sprawling market of Ulda, but the steady stream of visitors who came and went let the place a kind of bustling energy Though her duties had thus far asked little more of her than to clear obstinate flocks of algos from the road, she breathed a sigh of relief as the wagon trons safely into the village. I shall never take caravan guards for granted again, she vowed, feeling utterly drained by the demands of constant vigilance. 
For a time, Alice simply stood and watched as the merchant hurried back and forth in a flurry of preparation. Her silent observation were soon interrupted, however, by the arrival of breathless Emery. There's so much and more to be done, Mistress Levier, the young woman chirped. We'll need your help with the selling. Selling? But I've no experience with. Seizing her hand, Emery dragged Alice toward the stall her colleagues had erected in the village square. Residents and visitors alike were already crowding around the merchant, inspecting the wares that neatly lined the makeshift shelves. Alice stopped short where she saw the swelling throng. This is a task for my brother, she thought with a twinge of panic. If Alfino were here, he would already be striding into their midst, sporting that infernal grin of his. Yet even as he attempted to back away, the merchant girl yanked her forward once more. You remember the talk we had about pricing, don't you? Well, yes, but surely you don't expect me to. But Emery had already swiveled on her heels and begun serving a waiting customer, leaving Alice to talk to the breeze. She was still standing open-mouthed behind the counter, entertaining thought of escape, when a matronly middle-aged woman thrust a bolt of cloth toward her. How much for this, then? Alice stared blankly at the cloth, her mind in disarray. And then she glimpsed Emery's brief backward glance at the mischievous smile that played on her lip. At least one of us is enjoying this. The noise in the square rose as the haggling began in earnest. And Alice permitted herself to sigh. After a hard day of bargaining, the caravan had sold most of his stock. And that evening, the merchant retired to a dilapidated inn on the edge of the village proper. Exhausted, Alice sat down heavily on one of the two beds in her cramped room, and began flicking through the volume on Arkin theory she had purchased during the stay in Ulda. Ever since her days as a student, it had been a nightly ritual for her to open a book before bed and note down new findings in a journal. Should she discover any promising techniques, she would rise early the following morning and attempt to put the learning into practice. But hours of unfamiliar work had taken their toll, and she was only a few lines into the current chapter when her eyelid began to droop. By the time Emery came in, she was all but asleep. The merchant girl stifled a laugh as Alice snatched reflexively at the tome that had begun to slide from her lap. Sorry for dragging you along today, Emery said smiling. I thought you might find it entertaining. It was certainly an experience, Alice replied with a tired grin. Emery sat down on the bed opposite and glanced at Alice's book with interest. You never miss a day, do you? She said, shaking her head. Trying to keep up with that brother of yours, eh? May I but first, Alice admitted. But it was my grandfather who taught me the value of reading, and it's a habit that I am proud to have maintained. It is well that you respect your grandsire's teaching, Alice, but I doubt he meant for you to fall asleep sitting up, Emery chided gently. With that, she took the still open volume purse on Alice's knees flipped the silk bookmark back into place and snapped it shut. I hadn't finished, Alice managed, even as the girl dropped the book onto the pile of her belongings. Emery stretched and yawned. It will still be there on the morrow, she said, and then her impish grin returned. And it's not as if you didn't learn a few things today. You made your first sale, for heaven's sake. I'm certain both Nalthal and your grandsire would forgive you for missing a single night of study. Ordinarily, Alice would not countenance as a convenient excuse, but the warmth of Emery's manner had disarmed her. There was a familiar kindness in her words that set Alice's heart at ease. Both girls readied themselves for bed, and Emery illuminated the room with another of her radiant smiles before reaching out to extinguish the lamp. Sleep well. And that was the last night Alice would spend in her young friend company. A sliver of sunlight fell across Alice's face, and she slowly opened her eyes. Pulling herself up to a sitting position, she spent a moment looking around before remembering where she was, in one of the private rooms of a Gridanian inn. The day had just dawned, and she had been dreaming. The journey she had made with Emery had ended long ago. The vault of her mind, the only place where she would ever see the girl again, on the day following Alice's debut as a merchant, the caravan had set off for its next destination during one of Thanalan's rare thunderstorms. 
The deluge made it hard to see and still harder to steer, so the wagons were spaced out more than usually as they slipped and slid along a muddy path that cut through the otherwise impassable bluff. A muffled rumble was the only warning they had before the cliffside collapsed. In a space of heartbeat, the carriages bringing up the rear, and all who rode aboard them were buried beneath a mountain of southern earth. And Emery was gone. As fate would have it, Alice had been riding on the lead wagon and emerged from the ordeal without so much as a bruise. She duly carried out her contract, escorted the surviving merchant to the next town, before bidding them farewell. Mind still numb with shock, she was some distance away when she chanced to glance back at the caravan and saw how few of the wagons remained, her chest constricted with such grief that the tears finally fell. After that, Alice had returned to travelling alone, filing the memory of each new meeting and parting away inside her breast and taking none into her confidence. It was on the lonely days that following that she chanced to hear rumours of an unknown band of heroes that appeared to be doing the work of the Scions, and thus at long last she found a purpose. The gossip in the ports made much of the recent events in Isgard, but she doggedly followed the underlying threats of primal activity. Alice would learn the nature of these champions, whose course appeared destined to cross that of her brother and his comrades. She swung her legs over the side of the bed, stretched and threw open the shutter. As she gazed out to the morning sky, a fragment of a dream rose unbidden. The image of Emery's smiling face. Alice recalled the girl's well-meaning word with an aching sadness. Some things do not last until the morrow. <laughs>